Okay, good evening, everyone. For those of you who don't know me, I think I know most of you coming on. Uh, my name is Kimberly LeBlanc, and I'm the academic chair for Nurses Specialize in Wound, Ostomy, and Continence, and the ENSWOC program. I want to start with our land acknowledgement that in Canada, we live, learn, and work on traditional Indigenous territories. We pay our respects to the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit ancestors and affirm our commitment to respectful relations with one another and this land. And I'm coming to you this evening from the Algonquin Anishinaabe Unceded Territory in the Ottawa region and the Udawa region. So welcome everyone to this evening's event. Um, I know many of you, this has been a long time coming. We've been talking about it for a long time and we're very excited about this program. So I would like to start by introducing you to our two guests this evening. We have Dr. Carolyn Carvel, who and uh, Dr. Fatch Colombo, both from Curtin University. And uh, while uh, Dr. Colombo, I'm meeting for the first time uh, face to sort of face to face this evening. We've had a email relationship of late. Uh, Dr. Carla Carvel has been a dear friend and mentor of mine for many years, and she's actually the one responsible for me doing a PhD. She's the one who convinced me I should do it. So fair warning to all of you if you get to know her, um, she may talk you into it. Well, so, uh, Carolyn and Fatch, I'm going to hand this over to you now. Well, thank yeah, you. And it's really, um, Fatch is going to do all the talking, but I would just like to congratulate you all for choosing wound ostomy incontinence as a nursing specialty. I think you join a very elite group of nurses who are able to change the world in many ways. And I would just really looking forward in a very small way to be part of your journey, I hope, or to promote your journey. And yes, I would always encourage you to go further. Um, and perhaps there can be conversations that we have at some other time. So thank you very much for Kim for making this a, a reality. Um, you're right, it has been a really long time coming, but all good things come to those who wait and are patient. So thank you very much indeed. Batch, would you just like to take over? Thanks, Karen, and thanks, Kim. Uh, I just want to also to, uh, first of all, start by really uh, acknowledging uh, the First Nations. So, Katyn really acknowledges all First Nations of this place we call Australia and recognizes the many nations who have looked after country for more than 60,000 years. We are honored and grateful for the privilege to maintain campuses operating in Perth and in Kagoli in Australia. We pay our respect to elders past and present as custodians and owners of these lands. We recognize their deep knowledge and their cultural, spiritual, and educational practices and aspire to learn and teach in partnership with them. Katyn also acknowledges First Nations people's connection with our global campuses. We are committed to working in partnership with all custodians and owners to strengthen and embed First Nations voices and perspectives in our decision-making now and into the future. So uh, basically, I would also just uh, like to also acknowledge the presence of Dr. Joe, uh, who is with me this morning. Cool. So Dr. Joe teaches one of the research unit in the course. So she's going to provide some information about that uh, unit. Also, uh, Steph, Steph from admission. I can't see her. I can't see her here, but I think probably she's joined. Here. But, yeah. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Thanks, Steph, really. No Thanks, Steph. So, uh, Steph has also been really uh, uh, helpful to put together this PowerPoint presentation and also respond to some of the questions that uh, I had regarding admission and we are privileged to have her. I think she's gonna really also present on the uh, application process issues regarding fees. So once I reach at that uh, point in the presentation, I'll hand over to uh, Steph. So welcome Steph and also welcome Joe. So um, really, uh, Peyton University is uh, Really big university. Uh, oh, Batch, your slides aren't your your slides aren't going forward. Oh, sorry. I I knew I I thought maybe you just forgot to move them forward for the. No, no, I, slide, I, I was moving. Okay. Um, 
just a moment. Now we're seeing your speaker's notes, the slide, the uh, presenters, the presenter notes. Dispatch, would you like me to share? And I'll progress the slides as you're talking. Steph, I just made you a co-host, so you should be able to share. If this doesn't work, I have them on my computer, I can share. Oh, there we go, perfect. Okay. Okay. So, so, sorry for yeah. so, sorry for that. Yeah. Sorry for that. So yeah, just to give you a, a background to Ketin. So Ketin is a university which is in the western part of Australia. Uh, it is a global university and it has campuses in uh, in Malaysia, Singapore, Dubai, and Mauritius. And our main campus is here in Western Australia in Perth. Uh, this university has four campuses within Western Australia. So we have uh, Ketin Perth campus, Ketin uh, Perth city campus, Ketin Kaguri, and Ketin Midrange. It has more than 58,000 students who are studying with us, and of these, 25% are international uh, students. So in terms of our history, it, uh, the university was launched in 1987, transitioning from the Western Australia Institute of Technology. Uh, our namesake is Australia's most popular prime minister. So it was named after John Ketin, who was the popular uh, prime minister. And uh, John Ketin declared the great university should find its heroes in the present, its hope in the future. It should look ever forward. So we really embed this in our uh, mission as Caton University. And just uh, below the text there, you can see our global campuses. So you can see our uh, Malaysia campus, our Singapore campus, Dubai campus, as well as uh, Mauritius campus. And uh, the map there just displaying specifically where our campuses are. Uh, that's why we are known as a global uh, university. In terms of global ranking, which is also very important when one is seeking to apply for admission, uh, Peyton University is ranked in the top 1% of universities worldwide. Uh, and this is according to academic ranking of world universities. And also it has a QAS five stars plus, and it is really highly regarded in terms of research excellence. And when it comes to uh, graduates employment, it ranks the best in Australia for employer satisfaction. Now looking specifically to the School of Nursing uh, where uh, this uh, advanced practice, uh, the master's in advanced practice is hosted, uh, the School of Nursing is ranked 11th in Australia and first in Western Australia. And also it's ranked 54 globally. And as I indicated, it's number one in Western Australia, according to URAP. So Katyn has a number of uh, academic faculties and centers and offers a comprehensive range of uh, undergraduate and postgraduate as well as professional uh, educational courses. And you can see those pictures down there just showing students from different uh, faculties and centers. Our 2030 vision is really to work in partnership in order to make a difference in people's lives. 
and also uh, our planet. And we hope working in partnership with the WOC in Canada will help us realize this vision. And now going specifically to why we are here, the master of advanced practice uh, with a specialization in wound ostomy and continuous uh, care. Uh, so this specialization really responds to the uh, great need for this specialty, uh, especially in the prevention and management of patients with acute and chronic wounds, ostomies and incontinence. So the Master of Advanced Practice aims to develop graduates who uh, possess a combination of knowledge and research skills applicable to industry. So specifically, just to really explain uh, further there, the Master of Advanced Practice would help you or equip you with uh, knowledge and skills to think critically, and also more importantly, to use really research to improve practice. So basically, it helps uh, uh, nurses, uh, also uh, midwives and uh, other health professionals who want to specialize in this area to be able to use evidence-based uh, uh, information to improve uh, patient care. We assume that you have the knowledge given that you have completed the Bachelor of Science uh, degree and also that you have completed the uh, grad certificate. So we assume that you have the technical knowledge and specifically for us is to help you with the research component. So this, um, this course really provides that, provides uh, knowledge in terms of research and in terms of how you can apply uh, evidence in uh, improving care or patient care. Enrollment can be full-time or part-time. I think uh, Steph will provide more information to that. And the study plan can be negotiated. So you can negotiate with the course coordinator. Uh, and a part-time study really is essential for specialization that are really linked to uh, employment. So this slide here is just providing the course structure, just showing you the units that you are supposed to complete. Uh, I have to clarify that here in Australia, we regard, uh, uh, we regard subjects as units. So when I talk about units, I mean the subjects within the course. So what subjects are you gonna be uh, completing within the course? So there are three really units that, uh, uh, that uh, students are supposed to complete, especially those who have a GLAD certificate. So uh, the first one is research and evaluation in health. And then there is evidence informed clinical practice. And the uh, last one there is a uh, health research professional uh, project. So I will provide some detail to that shortly. With the research and evaluation in health unit, I am the unit coordinator for this unit. And really this unit introduces students to basic principles of qualitative, quantitative, and mixed methods research approaches and also ethical considerations, uh, consumer and community engagement in health research, and also evaluation of uh, health interventions. So it, it gives background information regarding research, and it, uh, it prepares uh, students to be able to use research in their practice. As you are aware that uh, once you graduate with this, um, uh, with this qualification, you will be consumers of research. Consumers meaning that while you are working, you're gonna be using uh, research to improve patient care. Uh, as such, you are required to have knowledge of different uh, research methods so that you are able to identify really evidence that you can apply to, uh, 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 that you can apply into your practice because if you don't have this knowledge, how do you know that the evidence that you are trying to incorporate into care is, uh, is a uh, high level evidence? So you need to have this knowledge so that you are able to critique research, that you're able to identify uh, really high level evidence to uh, incorporate in patient care. 
In terms of assessment in this unit, there are really three pieces of assessment. The first one is written review, and you are given an ethical an, an ethical study, and you are asked to identify ethical uh, issues in that study. The second piece of assessment is a written analysis, and more specifically, it's about critiquing uh, a research article. And this is guided by, and uh, you are guided by a model. So you're given a model and you're asked to use that model to critique a research paper. The final piece of assessment is a written examination. And uh, this one has, um, has different sections. It has a multiple choice section, short answer section, and also long answer question uh, section. Evidence-informed clinical practice is another unit that you'll be required to complete. The UC for this unit is not here today, but I've taught this unit before. So this unit really takes students through the steps of addressing a clinical research problem. So students are really challenged to identify a clinical research problem. And once they identify that, they are also asked really to uh, go into literature, to uh, really look for studies that would help to address that clinical research problem. So uh, students are equipped with um, skills to search for literature in the databases, and then retrieve such type of articles to use uh, in, uh, in uh, this uh, unit. And uh, part of the assessment is, uh, written paper one. In this written paper one, students are asked really, as I indicated, to identify uh, a clinical uh, research problem and then search for literature to address that and identify a number of papers uh, that could address the clinical research problem. And then this uh, then leads to uh, assessment two, which is a written paper two. A written paper two, this is where students are uh, supposed to really appraise the articles that were identified in, in paper one and also identify uh, evidence that would help to address the, uh, the clinical search question and provide recommendation for practice. In the health and research professional project, um, I have Joe here who, who is the UC for uh, this unit. So I'll uh, temporarily hand over to Joe to just provide some information for this unit. Um, thanks, Patch. Um, hi, everyone. Um, so this final uh, unit um, of the um, Master of uh, Advanced Practice course um, that um, basically is to apply the knowledge and skills that you have um, acquired uh, from the previous two um, foundation, a call of foundation research um, uh, unit that Fetch just um, gone through. Um, so it's all about application. And then um, every single student uh, will be undertake an independent um, project um, over uh, one semester. So um, we need to be um, very aware and uh, aware of the time frame. So it's only uh, about 15 weeks. So we need to um, be um, selecting um, a clinical um, uh, problem and then uh, come up with a appropriate um, methodology to address this uh, clinical problem. Um, and then um, student will be assigned um, an academic um, supervisor. From my understanding, um, Kim, you be um, the supervisor um, for all, and then it depending on the number of students, and then we go uh, as as well what we actually come through the door. But um, and in a sense, um, there are three pieces of um, written assignments for this unit. So the very first one is um, project concept. So um, you can treat this as a mini. Uh, project proposal um, is only a two page. Um, and so to start with the problem identification and then come up with the aim objectives um, that um, the student would like to achieve through um, a project and then um, a um, statement of um, the methodology uh, that how this um, 
uh, aim objectives can be addressed. And then move on to um, a week 10 uh, slash 11 um, uh, assignment two. So that's a project progress report. So basically, um, by that stage, uh, we would actually expect the student actually um, have achieved um, certain portion uh, or certain stage of the project. Um, uh, and then um, by the end of a week um, 14 um, or beginning of week 15, and we will be expecting a fully uh, written project report from title uh, to background, to aim objectives, to methodology, to results, to discussion and conclusion. Yeah, I'll hand um, um, back to um, our Dr. Joe, jo, yeah. while, while we're on this slide, I did have one question that I was going to bring up, which yeah. is, and I, we can explore this greater depth, but I have a number of research projects that I'm in various stages of getting ethics approval for. for. Would any of the students who you know are under me be able to use portions of that for their research project? Like, could we get them involved in ongoing research uh, where they would be able to, uh, maybe they're writing the research proposal or maybe they're, uh, if I already have ethics, maybe they're going out and doing the data collection and um, doing some data analysis. Would they be able to do that or would it have to be their own concept that they do from beginning to end? Um, so very good um question because I was gonna to um make an appointment with you and do a, a separate conversation okay. about the 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 size and then the uh the extent of um the project okay, that so we can, we'll certainly, Okay, then we yeah, can but, talk about that. But definitely what you brought up is definitely um we highly encourage um students to be part of a larger um um, project or study and then they take a portion of it um yeah definitely perfect um so I suppose one thing I need to add um for uh, because the uh, time frame um of this unit how it's designed mm -hmm. um the two possible uh, project um methodology um one will be uh we call it secondary analysis um mm -hmm. either quantitative or qualitative uh, primary study Mm -hmm. um, that's where um, Kim, you fit in um, nicely, beautifully with your own projects and then uh, looking after multiple students under your wing. Mm -hmm. um, but they have to take a different uh, aspect because um, mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's an individual project report. Um, uh, the second option that um, the student could not actually have a project already has got um, the lead um, um and hack ethics approval and then didn't have the data is already collected before they hit to my unit mm -hmm. um then that's where that the student uh, could choose um a clinical uh, query and then to explore in the literature in the um, um integrative integrative review of um the literature in that in that sort of format as well Okay. So um I think um um we we should actually have a, a separate meeting, and then really to uh, skyfold um the um the possibilities really, um okay. I am in uh, Singapore teaching from tomorrow till the uh, Sunday, but next week uh, onwards um uh, if we could actually uh, connect and then talk about it in okay. in in depth really that will be perfect. That'll be great. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Sorry to Thanks. interrupt. No, worries. thanks, Joe, for that. Uh, so before I hand over to Steph, I just want to clarify. Uh, Steph, if you can go back to to the um, post structure, please. Thank you. I just want to clarify in terms of the duration that it would take a student to complete this course. So basically, uh, it would take uh, one year for a full-time student to complete this course. As you can see that in the first semester, uh, the student will be required to complete uh, two units and each is uh, assigned 25 credits. So the research and evaluation in health is 25 and also the uh, evidence-informed clinical practice is 25 credits. And the second semester, they would only do one uh, unit and this is Joe's unit, the health research uh, professional project. And this is assigned 50 uh, credits. For, for part-time, they can choose just to do for example, one unit per semester. So that's okay. If, if that works for them, that's fine with us as well. 
So thanks, I hand over to Steph now. Thanks, Patch, and um, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Steph Robertson. I am from um, the Global Curtain Office. I'm here to address a bit of the application requirements um, and all of that kind of business for you. So um, in terms of the students that are, or the applicants that are here um, for this part, portion of the course for a Master of Advanced Practice, um, we just need to see evidence of um, your bachelor degree, um, I'm assuming in nursing, um, with a course weighted average of around 70%, uh, as well as your three years of work experience, and then um, just an upload of your nursing registration um, and your NSWOC certification as well. Um, in terms of English requirement, I believe um, most of you, you won't need to supply a, a separate test. Um, the successful completion of your undergraduate or postgraduate coursework degree from Canada will suffice. Um, if not, uh, we can discuss that. Um, I'm available um, via email all the time. So if you do have a question around that, um, you're more than welcome to reach out to me and we can just work through that before you lodge your application. Uh, in terms of the cost, yeah, you can see the cost are down there. So a 25 credit un uh, point unit is 4575, uh, with the 50 credit point unit being 9150. Um, I think it'll be slightly cheaper in the Canadian dollar with the current exchange rate. So just be aware of that. Um, and we don't need the payment to be made until um, the course starts because you will be studying online. So um, we just need it prior to um, the start of the semester, which is in February. <laughs> uh, in terms of applying, um, it is a slightly complicated. Um, we have recently moved to a new application portal, so um, we're all still getting our bearings with it as well. So I do appreciate, I've tried to make it as simple as possible for everyone, um, but if you do have Again, any questions at, at a later point, um, if you're trying to lodge and you just can't work it out, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, so the, the link to the course is actually here. We will supply these slides um, afterwards as well. So you have that link. Um, you just click the apply now button, which you can see on the left. It's, it's, it's I think it's uh, three or four times all over the screen. So you shouldn't be able to miss it on that, that slide. Um, but a pop-up will appear on the screen and you just need to select apply directly to the university. Um, it will take you to a separate area, um, a sign-in page. You'll need to select new user or register here to create your user account. Um, once you're in that account, you just add a new application um, and then you're just gonna search for the course by its name and your preferred commencement year. Um, we currently have 2025 and 2026 available for application now. Uh, you add the course, select next, and then you're just going to enter your details. Um, you will be selecting. Your stuff. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I just tried. I just tried that link before I started sharing it with everybody, and okay. uh, it, it says it's a broken link. No. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay. No, no, that's fine. I will. Um, that's frustrating. <laughs> so just, um, just, I will if you can send me, you. Yeah, send me the updated one and then I, I'm yes. going to put together a package for everybody on how to apply um, that we'll Perfect. send out uh, and we'll have up on our web page. But I'll, before I do that, I'll just wait for the correct link. Okay, I will send, I'll um, update that and send that through. No, not a problem. Um, once you've selected the course, um, yeah, sorry, under citizenship, you're going to select overseas student residing overseas as you'll be studying online. Um, and then you'll just be prompted to upload all of your documents um, through each of the fields. So your um, English proficiency, um, you can just upload your bachelor degree. Um, that's fine. Uh, uh, under credit for recognized learning, you will need to supply your proof of registration. Um, that's our admissions team have been advised um, that if they receive that um, in their applications, um, they know that it's for this, uh, I guess, arrangement. So they're aware of um, the students that are coming through for this specific uh, kind of course um, and then submit application. After that, you should receive a number of, I guess, um, automated emails. Um, and if we do need anything else from you, we will um, email you as well. 
and then hopefully it's very quick to just receive an offer directly from us. Um, once you're ready to accept that offer, um, you just need to sign the acceptance of offer um, by the application portal and make the deposit payment. Uh, you'll then receive an email notification from our global admissions team that you've been admitted to the course, and then you can log into the student portal, which we call Oasis, to start managing your enrollment. Um, once you're uh, enrolling, all you need to do is activate that Oasis account. Um, Oasis is basically uh, our student portal, so all any kind of official emails from, um, as well as your unit outlines, um, everything like that will be available via your Oasis account. Um, once you've enrolled in your units, again, it's very, it's quite simple. Once you're in Oasis, they do have a whole, I guess, um, body of work behind to just help you through it step by step. It's quite simple. Um, and then you just register brew classes as you're studying online. Um, you may only have to do an online class registration rather than um, specific timetabling <laughs> for obvious reasons. Um, yeah.